Hey, what's up, you guys? Um, welcome to the first ever mini-sode of Tama Tea. Um, my name is Lila, and I am currently running um, my Digimon V2 and Digimon X. And I am drinking um, this Arizona, like, stress relief tea. It's like... <laughs> <laughs> it's like a decaffeinated black and green tea blend. Are you feeling stressed? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No, I don't need to be de-stressed whatsoever. <laughs> it's actually my sister's and she bought it. She's been stressed. So <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't need it. Yeah. Obviously. I'm, I'm just reaping the benefits of her stress, I guess. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure it tastes good. It is very good, actually. Very sweet, which is not what I usually go for, but I like it. So, Well, I am Crystal, and I was not running anything up until today, but I um, booted up my meats again. I have, like, a My Meats character running on that, and I have two odd pets, a uh, Thinkway Toy Story pet, and the Caro Caro Karopi pet, which my little dude's at like a little tadpole right now. I have the Thinkway one pause because it makes lots of noise. Ooh, I've always wanted to try the um, the Karopi one. Do you like it so far? I need to look up a guide because I don't really know what I'm doing. And the buttons <laughs> kill me because select is C and cancel is B. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> That ruins it for me. I I like it. It's really cute. I have like a transparent green shell and it's adorable, but that's making it so hard for me to play because I keep being like, what am I doing wrong? And then I'm like, oh, I just have things all backwards. Plus it's in Japanese, <laughs> so I don't really understand the menus as of yet, but I fed it enough food that it evolved already once. So. Oh, okay, cool. I, I guess I'm doing something right. I was researching that one and someone said they didn't like it for some reason. I have no idea why because it looks really cute and like it seems simple enough. So I don't really see what the problem would be. But oh, yeah. Did uh, do you have any interesting Tama mail? I know that was like part of your recent Tama mail, right? Um. Oh, yeah. OK, so I'd been waiting on this for so freaking long because I went uh, SAL on this and I shouldn't have shipped it that way that's just it took so long so this with a uh kaikabo for the entama came and i was gonna like try and run that during the secret characters hatch in the tamagotchi collectors discord but like time has just gotten away for me <laughs> i'll be honest <laughs> that's why i stopped running everything because i was running a bunch of stuff a bunch of color models last week because i received an id L and then I got that Digimon that I tracked down finally finally um, oh my god that sounded like a nightmare <laughs> so I guess I've been just like trying out a couple of different things and I got a little burnt out but I picked up the pace again um I am like waiting I guess on some Tama Mel but I don't think anything's coming anytime soon I th what, think what are you waiting the on? soonest thing that will come is a Digimon case Ah, like, wait, like an acrylic it... case for the Digimon V1. Mm -hmm. Where did you get it from? eBay. Was it one of those um, like $25 ones? Yeah, I think it was like yeah. 23 or something like that. That's the cheapest I've seen them thus far, I'll be honest. Every time I see them pop up, they're like 40 bucks, which is pretty expensive. And I just want one, I guess. Like ideally, I would have two so that I can run them both together and not be worried. But I really just want one for the the yellow one that I have because that one I want to keep really, really nice. But the other one's already loose and, like, not in the best condition. So it doesn't yeah. need to be protected as much. That'll come. I have a Fit Boys <laughs> V-Pet, which is, like, ex an, exercise, an exercise pet, a guy that you exercise. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a Russian one. I'm very excited for that one. <laughs> when you said exercise, I thought like X or size, like demons, like, <laughs> like, you know oh. what I mean? <laughs> oh, yeah. Like the exorcist, like you've got yeah. 
you got the devil inside you. Okay, yeah. That's, yeah. <laughs> I would love a virtual pet like that, but no, like, <laughs> like doing cardio. <laughs> you know, satanic in my opinion. Like there's something bad about that. <laughs> like you overwork your little guy till he's like sweating and dying. I'm just like, I, I want to know who was at the like, you know, they were at the drawing table and they were like, you know, it would be great. You know what the kids want? <laughs> <laughs> they want they, to make a little man run. <laughs> they want to work out. They yeah. want to work on their abs well, and I their pecs. It's, it's not untrue. Like, I want to do it to someone else. I don't want to do it. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess conceptually, yeah, it's great. It's make someone else do all the hard shit. <laughs> maybe maybe it'll give you, like, the it'll, – it'll feel like you're working out. You'll live vicariously through your pet. And, oh, boy, but that's, yeah. like, a slippery slope. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, because then you you never work out yourself. <laughs> something, something bad about that. But, um – yeah, I'm not drinking any tea. I'm drinking a Mountain Dew because I'm trash today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was feeling tired, needed a Mountain Dew. And, uh, I mean, that's basically it to get me up to speed right now. We're doing this little mini-sode because Destiny cannot join us today. She's having the time of her life <laughs> at a convention. <laughs> can't, can't blame her. Sounds like total fun. Oh, I um, know. But yeah, we wanted to save the big discussion for when she could be around. So um, as a little bit of, I don't want to say filler, because this is totally quality content here. Nothing mm-hmm. to be skipped over. Mm-hmm. But um, as a little <laughs> bit of a, of a break in between, we, we wanted to put this up. So we're going to cover some listener submissions and you know discuss some things that you guys have wanted us to talk about. And before we jump into the listener submissions, I wanted to say a really, really big shout out to Eric and the Tomatown.com team um, because they actually added a link to our SoundCloud on their website, like under the media tab. So if you go to Tomatown.com, I think Eric said it might not be available on the mobile version of the yeah, website. I, I do think that's true because uh, I just feel like the media tab in general on the mobile version is like, a little bummed something doesn't work it out but I always pull up the page as the desktop version anyways because like they've got some guides on there and stuff too so I want to be yeah to everything easily um but yes it is on there and I thought that was so awesome and nice <laughs> like thanks you I guys know. like really that's so supportive and like I was just really happy I was like this is so awesome and I'm glad like people you know want us to continue because we're really enjoying making this and it's really fun for us and it's even more fun when we get so much more po- like positive feedback and that sort of thing so just like thank you so much yeah and I just want to give major props because like the website looks great <laughs> I've oh. been I visit it like probably at least once a day to look up stuff for the meats so and it looks really really good and I just um I feel like everyone recently like we've got a couple of new endeavor endeavors that have popped up in our little community and everyone's been putting forth a lot of work and it's really evidenced by you know the stuff that people are putting out there so just want to like give credit where credit is due I think it's super awesome and I can't wait until I can see like more on their website because I know it's still growing Oh, absolutely. Like, I mean, it looks so good. And like, I wonder how they got the Tomatown.com URL because that used to be the actual like Tomatown, right? Yeah, I I have a feeling that probably after the website went down, someone else probably acquired the domain. And then uh, like that, that stuff expires, you have to keep paying for domains to like keep possession of them. So if the domain ever went free, I guess they noticed and were able to purchase it. And uh, it's just opportune that they were able to do that because uh, it's pretty iconic website amongst, you know, anyone that's ever played with a Tamagotchi. Oh, yeah, for sure. Like, I think it looks great. I even told Eric that it looks so good, like everything's so clean and nice. And he was like, oh, my God, it's like not done yet completely. And I was like, it seems like totally 100 percent to me so they're doing a really really great job so i'm really flattered that they put our podcast on their website let's jump into these listener submissions um the first one we have is a question from aram from tamagotchi collectors 
And he asks, with school jobs and pets of their own, do you feel Tamagotchis have evolved to be more than the simple concept of being a pet? Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I would I would totally agree with that sentiment because every once in a while I feel kind of just like inundated with all of these crazy features that are on the most recent, you know, um, generation of Tamagotchi. And I always want to go back to playing a vintage, like (laughs) I'm feeling overwhelmed. Let me pull out my angel because I know this is like simple. I just take care of it. I get to one thing. That's it. There's no, like, I feel like the whole genetics thing and other things, is just a whole nother facet of Tamagotchi specifically um, that has really changed its concept of being just like a pet. I don't know. It makes it seem, and and especially because the characters are getting more and more humanoid (laughs) as time goes on, it seems. So like Uh, they're kind of becoming less of pets and more like people. I'm not really sure how I feel about that. I mean, I like the newer versions of Tamagotchi and that kind of thing, but it doesn't really ring as many bells for me as like a vintage or a connection does because they look, you know, they're little pixely blobs and they, you know, they don't look like they're trying to be a human baby or a humanoid creature. They're like their own kind of little thing. And that kind of like clicks with me more than like playing dress up and, like you know having all these features and sometimes sometimes I feel like really overwhelmed with all the content like I (laughs) recently I think I've mentioned this before but I recently sold most of my color Tamagotchis except my for you's and my um mixes and meats because like I just felt like if I wasn't if I was playing like my piece for example and I wasn't using the IRDA phone and the and the um pierces and stuff I felt like I was like missing out Mm -hmm. kind of and I don't always have time especially because I have a two-year-old I don't have time to like really get into it on that level anymore so I just felt like someone else will have more fun and I can use some cash right now. You know what I mean? I definitely agree. I think that it's changed over time. I think that they, that Bandai has, you know, kind of evolved the the concept of Tamagotchi over time to, to, you know, adapt to the, the changing market as well. Right. Um, so I can't blame them in that respect because like simulation games are very popular nowadays so I understand that like Tamagotchi basically being like a handheld simulation as a for, as opposed to like a pet right <laughs> because yeah they do have jobs you know we we can take them on outings they have vacations we can dress them up it's 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 so involved now yeah for sure and I think like it kind of had to do that to survive as long as it has because I mean like the brand has been around for 20 years, like more than 20 years now. That's really amazing. So like Tamagotchi started with the really limited technology and then it evolved and changed. And I mean, we still have some of the same characters from the P1, right? Yeah. But they just look a lot different. I mean, I think I don't hate, I don't hate it that like you have all these features, but it it is kind of like when you play a vintage and then you play a color model, it kind of feels like a totally different device, at least to me yeah. anyway. Yeah, it is hard to, yeah, I guess, compare the two, which is what we will be doing in our next episode um, because they are so different. And that was something I had a conversation with um, a guy in one of my um, retro gaming groups uh recently shout out rob if you ever listen to this i was talking to robert and um i pulled out my meats i'm pretty sure to make sure it wasn't like dying or something it was sick so he had to see me like frantically give it medicine and feed it and everything and he was like what is that and i was like it's a tamagotchi and he was like that's not a tamagotchi (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> he's like that's a tamagotchi i was like yeah dude they make color ones now i collect them i actually went on a little spiel i was like i collect them don't you know like mm-hmm. i feel like i made i feel like i've made this known at least in my retro gaming communities that i do collect them um 
and a few people, I guess, now know about the podcast. But he was surprised to see how much they had changed because he just remembers, you know, a little keychain. Yeah. <laughs> a little keychain, and it had, you know, this tinny beeping sound, and all you did was clean up poop or whatever. So, yeah, I think conceptually it's, like, changed a lot. And for some people, they they don't see the appeal in in the mm-hmm. color models because it's just so radically different from what they see and and like i don't know identify a tamagotchi to be right cuz it kind of changed from like keeping this thing alive to like there's another goal now like there's mixing or there's like you know just so much more you can do with it it's not the point isn't just to keep it alive the point is to kind of have this little almost like a doll a virtual doll that you can dress up and take it out to do stuff kind of great comparison thanks (laughs) (laughs) I would say yeah it's just like a virtual doll it's like having your own little virtual barbie Or like Mr. Potato Head because the jeans can be all mixed up and stuff now. (laughs) Right. Oh, my God. I didn't think of that at all. (laughs) We dress them up. We mix up all their features and all the crap. Mm -hmm. And I'm happy with it. But every once in a while, I do wish that we'd get a color model that kind of had a lot of the vibe of a vintage or connection. Yeah. You know how it's changed from... The 4U and 4U Plus, it was like the standard kind of, you know, V-Pet thing. And then the the mix introduced introduced the mix, mixing element of it. Do you ever think we'll We're gonna go, back? go back? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> right? <laughs> I, I don't know because I, it's a lot it's a lot of speculation to be made because I think, yeah, probably eventually they'll, they'll go back. The thing is, gen- the genetics just offers so much to build upon you know so much content that you can build upon that I feel like now it's going to be it's it'll be a while before we see a color model that doesn't have genetic mixing and has like care-based characters yeah at least I would speculate but I I don't know there's no way to know I guess it just depends on how well these Tamagotchis continue to sell because if the the meats you know continues to sell well i don't think bandai will have any incentive to go back you know the mix happened and then the meats is like the mix but they added on the app pretty much and that's like the main difference i would say and then like where do they go from there like (laughs) i I think about that a lot i'm like what are they gonna do like i like the mixing but like i'm kind of sick of it so it would be nice to kind of change it up. But then I feel like the mixing element has done so well that I don't know if they'll like take it away. The way I feel about it is that I do like the mixing element like for its outcome. I do like seeing the mixed gem- genetics. But I think when it comes down to it in a VPET, I prefer like care based gameplay, you know. Oh, definitely. For I sure. Want it, I want it to matter. Like, I mean, I think I, I know that care does influence the the genetics a little bit. I don't know how yeah. much it does. I know it does it a little bit. But like you can leave that thing for a long time. It'll be fine. <laughs> that and I guess it's like so easy to circumvent the systems that be like you can just, you know, force feed it candy to make it happy with no consequence. <laughs> Uh, I know because like you can get endless amount of of toothaches and heal them and nothing bad will happen and I'm just like that's this is ridiculous Uh, I mean I'm kind of grateful because it's so hard to get their freaking happiness up they made that a little bit challenging so that's kind of nice yeah I guess the challenge is what you make it you know Mm -hmm. (laughs) well I think we should move on to our next listener submission Ethan Ziegler from the Tamagotchi Collectors Group um, asked us what our holy grail Tamas or V-Pets are Um, this is so hard because I want a lot (laughs) yeah I feel like I'm the opposite and I don't have that many that I want right now I mean admittedly you have like I think double the amount that I do so yeah (laughs) probably have covered your bases a little better (laughs) I get that because like as you said earlier you've been thinning out your collection I think you've come into uh, a great awareness of what you really like in a pet 
Oh yeah, for sure. Which I, I enjoy. Cool. I like that because I'm not like wasting my money on stuff anymore. Yeah. <laughs> I feel the same way. I, I watched um, um, Marie Kondo's show and um, she changed my life. Mm-hmm. Long story short. <laughs> and yep. then I cleaned my entire apartment and now I'm just like, well, I have to be so much more thoughtful when I get stuff right. down. Yeah. Because I went through all this trouble of actually cleaning out things and like talking to myself and asking what I like about things and like why things make me happy. And in pets specifically, I came to the conclusion that it's like I need something that's interesting, like some sort of interesting element in the gameplay. I can't just keep something because it looks nice or because it's yeah. valuable. And I'll be damned if I am just like getting things for the variety now Mm -hmm. (laughs) because I've my game room is just like maxing out on space and I'm getting stressed out about it. (laughs) So thinking about like having to accommodate more of a collection is getting getting stressful. But for Holy Grails, I guess I would say like I want a uh a, a Rico no Koibito, the little um, lover's dinky pet. Yeah, I've seen those. I don't really know anything about them. I know that they're kind of hard to find, right? Yeah, that's m- mostly the reason I don't have one. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's hard to find because, like, part of me is like, I guess I could get a Smarty Time. What's if a I'm Smarty get- Time? That's, that's like, it has the exact same shell, but... Mm instead of it being like a couple it's just one guy and you like take him to school oh that's cute it is really the couple sounds like cuter though yeah and it's it's a rarer pet which is why I would put it on my holy grail list because it's just more difficult to find I've seen there's like a couple smarty times up on ebay right now probably um and they are I guess somewhat pricier pets but I know recently one just sold on uh, Yahoo Jap- Japan auctions for like 30 bucks or something like that. So not crazy. If you come across one on the Japanese auctions, I would say probably not crazy. If you come across one on eBay, you're probably going to be paying like 60, 70 bucks. Yeah, I feel like eBay is usually like double YJA. So yeah. Yep. <laughs> and then, well, we were talking about it, Hana Hana me, because Destiny has one, which is really awesome <laughs> yeah I know I, when and, she told me that I was like oh my god you have one of those because I remember like being a 14 year old Tamagotchi collector and what was that website Tom and Azure or something yeah Tom and Azure has a little yeah I would scroll uh, through that forever and like that was one of the really rare ones and I was like oh my god I want one and now like I'm like meh too much of a hassle I don't really care I like the dinky programming because I have a dinky alien I have a dinky dino they're 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 fun pets and which is why I do want the the lover's pet and I would get a uh, Rico Chan if I could like find one for a good price as well the smarty time pet um the Hanami seems cool but it's just like so rare and if I found one I know it would be so exorbitantly priced that that I would never but conceptually it's really cool like I like the little light sensor that's really awesome Um, yeah it's a little plant I feel like we don't have like a lot of like plant type pets plant pets exactly yeah I need a pet rock v pet (laughs) oh my god that would be amazing why has no one done this before (laughs) dude I wonder if like anybody submitted that for the gigapets ar competition oh i would be freaking pissed because it should have oh my won. god right it totally <laughs> should have won if if it got submitted it should have won that's like that, your, that would be a 90s concepts colliding right there you know what i mean right I, I it. and then you could actually like in theory do that i mean i I don't know exactly how the animations would end up looking, but you could have evolutions <laughs> for rocks. Or just like turn into a mountain eventually or something, right? I would try if my little rock, rock turned animation. into a mountain. 
<laughs> my holy grail Thomas or virtual pets are ones that have never even been made. Right. <laughs> you know, like concept cars. <laughs> I need a concept Tama. Yeah. <laughs> Let's make it happen. It reminds me. I feel like you were in that conversation on the discord talking about that girl that has that one of a kind uh, uh, V5 <gasps> with oh. the like pink like kawaii goth shell yes i saw that and i was like what is that my holy grail (laughs) dude i was like i was like that is so cute i want to paint that like i could i could probably paint that it might not look perfect like that one but like i love it so much probably end up looking like the picture that she submitted Right. <laughs> and, and not like the finished Tama, but like yeah. close enough, you know? Oh my god. I I had no idea that existed. That must have been like from a was it's it from a, a contest? It was a contest, yeah. Yeah. Like I had no idea. That's a it's so pretty. It was so pretty. I'm like mad that I probably saw like these contests when I was a child and was like, oh, I will never win that. And then just like right. never even tried, you know? I mean, her design was beautiful. Like I couldn't, I, we were, we were probably like, what, like 15 maybe well, when it, that admittedly, happened? I'm pretty sure that that specific contest, like the pet that we're talking about was from a contest in the Philippines. So it's not like we would have been able to be in it anyways Uh, (laughs) I feel like I squandered so many chances to have like something that would be basically one of a kind now because as a kid I'd be like oh I can't even do that like my thing my design would never win I can't draw good so I'm just not even gonna try mom (laughs) (laughs) you can do it crystal I believe in you. Is that what your mom sounds like? <laughs> My mom's just very Hispanic sounding, so no. <laughs> okay, yeah, no. <laughs> she got like super Puerto Rican accent, so I'm not even gonna try that. I cannot. <laughs> well, that's the thing. I, that's the thing. You will never hear me like try to sound like my mom because yeah. <laughs> even I feel like it's racist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like, I don't speak Spanish at all, so whenever I try to do, like, a, a Hispanic accent, I feel like it sounds so bastardized and just bad <laughs> <laughs> that I don't even try. Right. No, I totally but, get um, that. <laughs> back on topic, Holy Grails. <laughs> yeah, Holy Grails. I actually got some of my Holy Grails recently, so I'm, um, like, pretty, I'm pretty content. I got a Druma Chibi. This was, like, a couple months ago. Oh yeah. Um, but I w- have wanted one of those forever because I saw I- like the shittiest looking one on eBay the other day for like thirty dollars, and I almost bought it because <gasps> I was like, as long as it works, I could repaint the shell. <laughs> oh yeah, you could totally have repainted it. Part of me t- was just like, no, Crystal, just just get one, just get a nicer one with the packaging. And I felt so strong about that that I I didn't do it, but I, I feel like it was oh, a squandered you opportunity have. because you yeah. should have gotten it. Thirty dollars, <laughs> that's good. I mean, I think I think I spent I want to say forty on mine, maybe after Zen Market fees. I don't remember. It doesn't have packaging, but it has the manual, and it's in really good shape. Yeah, yours um, does really nice and clean. Oh, thank you. Um, I actually I need to run it again because I got it because. It's a chibi, but it has exclusive characters, and I really wanted to get, like, the secret, secret character, mm-hmm. but I failed. <laughs> <laughs> but my friend Stephanie, who was running it with me, like, she got it, and I was like, oh, my God, why did I stop running it? So I need to run that again. And then another Holy Grail that I recently got um, is the Rose Royal Famitama. Ooh, yeah, yes. pretty I was looking for one of those for a long, long, long time. Um, and I finally, someone linked me on eBay and it was like 125 in packaging. And I just like, I made an offer on it, but then I like freaked out and I just bought it. <laughs> <'cause> I, didn't- <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Good, they're not going to respond in time. <laughs> yeah, no. That was seriously what I was thinking. I was like, oh, my God, they're not going to respond. Someone's going to snatch it up. I need to get it now. So I got it, and I have no regrets. So <laughs> I wouldn't regret it either. Oh, yeah. It's, it's like, it's amazing. And, like, I don't even want to touch it. Um, <laughs> and I don't, I don't have a lot of stuff in my collection like that. I did run it when I got it. But 
ever since then I'm like I can't do it again I'm too scared <laughs> I have another royal family I can run and it's like really really beat up I got it for like 10 bucks you got to look out for those trader deals sometimes stuff pops up and you're like oh my god so I, I have that um, that's that's the dang truth. I feel like every time I feel like I'm being really good and staying on top of the deals and like watching the groups and stuff, I slip up, I get busy for a second, and then all the deals popped up in that amount of time. I squandered my opportunity. <laughs> that was my <laughs> chance. Oh, I and know. I cannot seize it. The worst is when like you see something. And you go to comment on it because no one's commented on it. And by the time you your your comment gets posted, someone else is posted ahead of you. And you're like, oh, my God. How does that happen? <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> it makes me so sad. But, like. That literally, like, happened to me the other day. Like, I was writing up a comment. And, like, as I was typing the, the like, question mark, I saw a comment pop, pop up above mine. And I was like, okay, I'm just going to leave. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, obviously it wasn't meant to be. I'm just going to leave. Yeah. No, sometimes, sometimes like I've had things pop up and it's a good deal and then I'm, I miss it and then something pops up and it's a better deal and I'm like, oh my God. What what did I see the other day that I was just like, I should have bought that and then I ended up buying one like in package and it was new. Oh, it was the freaking Doraemon. Yeah, I, I, I don't even know. I passed up on yours because I wanted one with packaging. Mm -hmm. And then I think I saw another one with packaging that I was like, oh, this is a pretty, pretty good deal. I don't even know what why I didn't comment on it or something along those lines. Maybe it was probably that someone like had just commented before me or I commented like at the same time as someone. Yeah. And then I kind of forgot about it, but then they ended up messaging me and like asking me if I was still interested. And by that moment, like probably an hour or two beforehand, I had bought the one that I got now. And it was like brand new in packaging, like no paint chips, complete and everything. I think it was $25. Oh my God. That's amazing. Yeah. That's really amazing. I'm, I've never seen one in package go for that cheap. Blew my freaking mind. And then yeah. my Digimon was like stupid cheap, the first one that I got. Not <laughs> not the one that I had to track down because after paying that package <laughs> intercept fee, it was like not worth it. Oh my um, god. How much did you have to pay for the interception? I don't even know, like $17. <laughs> Something stupid. Yeah, I was that's like, sucks. this is not worth it. Because the oh, Digimon God. was loose. So at the end of the day, I basically paid like double for no reason. And I should have just like tried to get the package lost <laughs> so that yeah. I could get my money back instead. But uh, it's whatever. I'm not mad about it. I have the Digimon. But the first one I got like brand new in package and I just sent an offer on it. It was an auction. I sent an offer on it before anyone had bid on it and the seller accepted it. It was crazy. Ooh, how much? $20. <gasps> Dude, you're kidding me. <laughs> I'm not. And it, the English yellow one? Yeah. I hate you. Oh I'm my so God. <laughs> Every, everyone listening this is gonna hate me <laughs> I know how did you do that I will say like some of, my, some of the best pieces in my collection were just like sneak deals like I have the that vial of uh Arderu and mm. I didn't pay too much for that one I paid more for that than I paid for the Digimon man um oh I, I got a brand new new and packaged music star for like 30 bucks Ah. Uh. <laughs> I don't I don't love the shell it's that black headphone shell but like you know that, that's not that's not the worst one there it's some not bad... the worst one my husband was like oh I like that one I was like you would <laughs> yeah that's a very like guy ish shell I mean I actually that one I like that one better than like the, the, the there's that horrible piano one. Oh yeah um which then, some people like I feel like some people really love that shell and some people just hate it. I'm I'm kind of in the mm -hmm, camp that mm -hmm. does not like it very much. Yeah. I uh -uh. don't even like that like pink melody one, the one with like the pink treble clef. It's white. I had that one. I like that one. It's like it's very shimmery in person. In pictures think, it doesn't look that nice. I feel nice. like yeah, in pictures it doesn't look as nice as it does in person per in person cuz it does have like a pearlescent type of shell yeah. yeah it's like it's kind of like iridescent I guess is the word like where where it like reflects a bunch of different colors 
So mm. it's, it's really nice. But that, that one's not really my favorite either. Yeah, I really like the green one with the drums. Yes, that one's really cute. I like that one a lot. I wish I bought... I saw that one, like, back in the day when they were in the stores. And I almost got it. But then I got the pink one with stars instead for some reason. Cause I'm oh, yeah, that was the other one I was going to mention. There's that pink one with the stars. I think that one's pretty good. I'm really trying to rack my brain for, like... What are holy grails? Like, what are things that I don't already own that I really want? I think if I had to pick one, if I could pick any any V pet, like somehow I magically found a well and it would grant me a wish for a V pet, I think I would pick a magical witch just to experience it. Because well, ask I, for two. Okay, yeah. Okay, one for you too. <laughs> Oh, wait. No, I would say ask for two because you kind of need to connect them, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I'd, I'd ask for two magical witches. <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. The holy grail would be get all four magical witches and then be buried with them when you die. You know? Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I guess there are, I don't know, there's some other pets up there that, that are like pretty expensive and or rare that I guess I want like I don't have a devil gotchi mm-hmm. I would I would put that on my grail list because I do want one but I'm not in any particular rush to get one yeah, yeah I wouldn't rush and like everybody listening I wouldn't rush getting them because like sometimes deals pop up and maybe it's not like in the best condition or something but like at least you have it you know yeah. So for I'm that not one, a huge I would declare for conditions. So if I could find one for a good deal that wasn't like totally mint, I would probably snag it up. Oh, and something I guess I'm kind of looking for now is one of the um, Precure wrinkle phones. Okay, well, the... Um, the one with the stones. Yeah, I had one of those actually. I wish I sold it to you. Sorry. <laughs> it's, it's okay. Like I said, not in a, a particular rush. I actually right. saw one the other day. I should have bought it because I'm I'm just so, so stupid. But <laughs> I, And I told Kevin, I was like, dude, I should buy this right now. And he was like, just wait. And I was like, why? And he was like, because you should wait. And then we had a conversation. He was like, maybe you shouldn't wait. And then I was like, it's too late now, I'm sure. Oh, my God. <laughs> By the end of the conversation, I was like, I'm pretty sure it's too late now. And he's yeah. like, what do you mean? I'm like, let me refresh. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, if if you can think of, like, literally any rarish odd pet, probably on my grail list. I just – I'm not the type of person to have, like, holy grail Thomas because, it, I don't know, no, nothing about this is, like, make or break for me. Where I feel yeah. like that I have to get them. I have some things that I want. Like, and like you have that Uniqlo uh, Tamasuku. Yeah. I want that freaking shell. <laughs> yeah, it's really nice. Um, and market. some other things like that. But uh, I don't know. I'm happy with where I'm at. So I will just keep an eye out and eventually slowly acquire the holy grail thomas i think one thing i just thought of that like i would love to have and if it doesn't happen i'm not mad about it but if it does happen like hell yeah the um the pizza la famitama Ooh, that is a good one. Oh, it's so good it's so cute i want it so <laughs> bad it's so uh, i don't even know what pizza la is is it like a fast food chain or something i think it's a pizza chain yeah, but like that that's like the cutest thing I've ever seen. Like the I think the little <laughs> pizza toppings have like faces, I think, right? That's adorable. Yeah, that would probably be probably be my holy grail. Um, but I'm not too bothered. So <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's the thing. Uh, I have like a couple of different shell shell variations that I want, some odd pets that I want, but I don't know. I feel like all the ones that seem like they're crazily out of reach, I've just already written off as like not going to happen. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I won't, I won't be hurt if I never get a magical witch, but yeah. they're up there. They're on that grail list. I got to just befriend someone that owns them and go visit them just to see them. So yeah. that so that I can die so that I can die and feel like, you know, I didn't miss out on that. 
I touched <laughs> I touched a magical witch. I can die happy now. I was so afraid of dying with FOMO. Now I can <laughs> now I can rest in peace. <laughs> uh-huh. Okay, so um our next submission is from Tomatalk.com on Twitter. And they said, I enjoy hearing about the journey into the Tamagotchi com- Wait, hold on, hold on. Blah, blah, blah. This is a, it's, it's a little weird. bit of broken-ish English, but yeah. we will kind of try to make it as, uh, I guess, correct-ish as sounding as possible. <laughs> yeah, okay. I'm just going to read this. Yeah, I'm going to read it as it is. and we'll we, I understand what it's saying, and I'm sure you do too, so yeah. <laughs> go for it. It's just saying it is like, uh. <laughs> Okay, it says, I enjoy hearing about the journey into the Tamagotchi community happened. How people got into it, what changed over time, where they are now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> which which I do think is like a completely unique thing from person to person. Um, I definitely liked Tamagotchis as a child. And I feel that my appreciation of them now is like completely different to what I liked about them as a kid. Like I did like connecting because I don't I don't think I was really into like the vintage era. That was a little before my time. But um, the connection era, I was definitely into like connecting with my friends. I don't feel like I took very good care of my Tamagotchis ever as a kid. But <laughs> but now as an adult, like knowing that there's like care based characters and secret characters that you can get dependent on care, like knowing the complexities behind the programming now is something that I've grown to appreciate. Um, And when I say that, like, I was into connecting as a kid, I'm talking about, like, I don't know, from the ages of, like, probably seven, eight to, like, 12, 13. Once, Once I was in junior high, I feel like I kind of out, grew it plus at that time it was like the friends era which was shitty anyways right (laughs) (laughs) um where where am i now yeah not just like to completely shit on the friends but i'm shitting on it sorry um where am i now i collect a lot of things now like i am a video game collector i collect comic books i collect thomas and other uh, vintage toys so my taste is a little more eclectic I've come to appreciate other virtual pets that aren't Tamagotchis a lot I would say sometimes more than Tamagotchi hate to say it but it's like <laughs> I get burnt out on the Tom sometimes and it's really refreshing to pick up another device that's not a Tamagotchi because there's always going to be something just like a little bit different that's where I am now Almost 25 years old, still playing with the little virtual pets. It's funny that, like, you got into it more when you were a little bit younger. I was a little bit, not older, but it sounds like you said you stopped playing with them kind of when you are like, 12-ish, maybe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I actually started, like, playing with them when I was, like, 11. <laughs> so, yeah. So, like, my first, like, virtual pet was actually one of those little Neopet, pocket Neopet things that open and have a little figurine in them. And I love that. But then that kind of got boring. I kind of like got tired of Neopets. And then when I was in sixth grade, I guess, my best friend had Tamagotchis and she had like a V1 and a V2 connection. And I was like, oh my God, that's so cool. I totally want one. And so like one weekend, um, my dad made me do a bunch of chores. And then (laughs) we went to Target and me and my sister got a V2 each. And I still remember going, I don't remember a lot of stuff from my childhood, but I was so excited that I still remember going to Target and picking it out and stuff. I like collected all the different versions of the American Connections and I was always like looking online, dying to get the Japanese versions and the rare ones and the vintages and that kind of thing. Um, And then once I got into high school, it kind of like died out, I guess. I kind of like found other interests and I wasn't interested in it as much. I remember still running them when I was in like sophomore, a sophomore in high school. And then like I got back into it kind of after college 
I then made it a mission to get all the stuff that I wanted when I was a kid. So, like, my really big ones were, like, the Tamawaki, the Asuchi and Mesuchi, the um, the Tamagotchu. I really wanted those. So, like, all these things. I've been through all of them. And I've tried pretty much everything I ever wanted to try. I tried it all out. And I've either sold it or kept what I liked. Um, so, that's kind of where I am now, I guess. <laughs> I'm at the point where, like, I've tried a lot of things and I've figured out what I like and, like... I still really enjoy the hobby and like we still have a lot of new things coming out. So um, I guess that's kind of what I'm looking forward to the most now is like what's going to where we're going to go from here, I guess, like with the Sanrio and the fantasy. And yeah, so that's where I'm at right now. Throughout your like history, I realized that I completely skimmed over college for myself in college was really when my interest for Tamagotchi came back. And I remember looking <laughs> online at four U's when I was in college. And yeah. I was so like jazzed to get one. I really wanted to get one because I found out that like I could use my phone and send shit to the Tamagotchi and I was just like oh my god dude this is a whole new world to Tamagotchi. You guys yeah. don't understand what this means for me. Yeah. I was so broke in college. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't we I was all? <laughs> so, I was beyond broke in college. Like the the fact that I I don't even know how I made it work. I'm going to be real. Ramen noodles? <laughs> it, it was like even less than ramen noodles. It was like, hey, I, I'm like super hungry. So I'm going to have a chicken every two days. Oh, my God. Oh, <laughs> stuff, my God. Stuff like that. Like, like literally so bad. But I didn't have any money for any type of, you know, collections fun things so the tamagotchi thing was literally something that i would just look at every month like yeah. i don't i don't know what my problem was but i <laughs> had this thing about going on ebay and i would look up like a couple of different items that i always told myself like whenever i have the money i'm gonna buy this thing you know mm -hmm. now i'm the same way because i'm basically finally living on my own having things a little more stable in my life and able to, you know, invest in things that make me happy. So yeah. I'm kind of doing the same thing now where it's like, I'm just trying out all the stuff that I wanted when I was a kid and stuff that I wanted when I was in college. And I was just like too broke to buy into. <laughs> I was going to ask like, which Tamagotchi kind of got you back into collecting? Cause I think the one that got me back into it was the peas. Cause I got that while, my boyfriend at the time bought it for me for my birthday or something. And he was like, what is this? This is weird. And I was like, shut up. I like it. <laughs> I feel like we talked about this on, an, on another episode. Actually, I would say the peas as well, because I yeah. bought a purple peas. I feel like that was the first colored Tama that I got. Um, mm -hmm. Same here. I think um, we did talk about this actually, but that's okay. maybe I bought something else before or around this time. Like I think I bought an end Tama before or around this time. So so maybe this isn't what got me back into it, but I think that the peas was like one of the first things that I bought that really got me passionate about them again because I was like very interested with the pierces. I got a trio, so I was able to use the VDPs, and I was like, mm -hmm. this is freaking sick. Like, <laughs> yeah. I can add all of this extra content on there. And I mean, I have a, a, a white one now. and. I think it's just like super gorgeous. <laughs> that one got me super jazzed about Tamagotchis and that's like what got me back into it. So thank you, Tamagotchi peas. I wouldn't be probably talking about this right now if I hadn't have thought that way back when. Oh yeah, for sure. And it's funny that you mentioned that like you, um, had the phone and the pierces because like when I had mine I had nothing I knew about the pierces but I didn't know that there was like downloadable content and like the phone thing so like I had my peas for years playing it completely in Japanese and oh. yeah and I loved it I oh my god I loved it <laughs> oh I mean and, like um, admittedly we, all of our other Thomas are all in Japanese so like 
Yeah. <laughs> Not a big deal. Well, I think we can move on to the next listener submission. This is from Jesse Swender in uh, the Tamagotchi Collectors Group. What keeps you going when you are in a Tama rut? Um, you know, not wanting to run anything. I felt this recently. <laughs> like, I just kind of, I guess, burnt myself out. I was playing too many things. But I don't know. I always find my way back because I don't like idle hands. Yeah. <laughs> I, I like having something to do. <laughs> Same. And I don't, but, but that being said, I don't like being on my phone. <laughs> like mm-hmm. I'm not that type of person that's like checking my phone a thousand times a day. Sorry about it. Like I know I, I'm probably the worst about getting back to our group message, but, <laughs> oh, but no, you're fine. Like, I wish, I wish I was more like that. Cause like I either, I'm either like on my phone a lot or like I'm taking a total break from it. And like right now I'm on it a lot and it makes my brain like fried so like I totally get not wanting to be on your phone a lot but as a result I like having something around that I can look at the little Thomas screen isn't too bad it's also something that I just have to check up on periodically don't have to be too crazy but it has you know it's satisfying that that's all it is it's like my own fidget spinner Oh, for sure. I totally feel that. Like, absolutely. It's just nice to have something to do, I guess. <laughs> like, yeah. even like, in, for the in-between times, because that's kind of what it is. It's like, you can't sit there and play it all day. I mean, maybe you could, but <laughs> I don't. You probably could, but like, um, do you why? Want to? <laughs> why would you? <laughs> yeah. But yeah, um, I like having something around, something to do. Um, and that like rut feeling comes about when I don't take it for what it is because like like you just said you can't play it all freaking day right you know so trying to like do things excessively or running a lot of them at one time can like I guess lead to a feeling of burnout because it's just like you're just inundated with Tamagotchi's like being upset and crying at you and pooping and, and like you're trying to like make them fall in love and stuff. <laughs> it's like it's like having kids. Like you don't want to have too many kids because then you got poop everywhere and it's just horrible. You're right? not wrong. I mean, who wants to who wants to live like that? Who wants to no. live in in poop? No, <laughs> no, we don't want it. No, I don't um, want to drown in that poo poo. No, thank you. But uh, what keeps me going is just the fact that we have like great community and also that like the hobby is not dead there's like always new stuff happening we have new pets coming out all the time whether they are like knockoffs odd pets or like tamagotchis themselves and then there is a growing like foundation of knowledge on all of the releases up to date so like there's never a bad time to get into the hobby and there's always more things to be learned that's what keeps me going like in the hobby in general and that's what keeps me out of ruts is just like falling back and finding another thing about the hobby to be interested in whether it's like you know, new releases or doing, you know, mods or customs, crafts, stuff like that. Oh, yeah, definitely. Oh, yeah, there's like, I mean, there's so much like within our community. And I think speaking of like community, I think something that like, if I'm in a rut and like, I either don't want to run anything or like, I don't know what to run. Like I'll go on Instagram and like, I'll see someone like having fun with their Katai or like having fun with their V2 or for you. And then I'm like, Oh my God, I want to run that. And then that kind of like, you know, sometimes you need like a little inspiration to run something. You can't just like think of like what you like about something by itself. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? But like if I see someone else having fun, with a certain version and then I'm like oh my god I should play with that (laughs) you know yeah that being said it's like that's why uh the community hosts group hatches so that everyone can come together 
run something that like maybe they haven't run before or it isn't their first choice and you know share what they like don't like about things and kind of just have a sense of community and just like you know share some some uh, discussion with like-minded people about what you're doing. It's and, and it's a way to get excited about things too, because like everyone likes to share the progress they've done if they've managed to uh, get a good care character. And I feel like the best validation for that is sharing it with people that like understand the work that went into it. Oh my god, for sure. Like it's like so rewarding when like someone's like, oh nice, you got. Uro Mamechi or whatever, you know, it's like, oh my God, you guys get it. And like, we're happy about this together, <laughs> you know? <laughs> um, but really that's a, that's a big thing. I think like, I feel like I wouldn't nearly be as into the hobby in general as if we didn't have such like a responsive, positive community. Like, if I was just playing them by myself, like I would be kind of like, you know, I, I'd still love it, but like, it's different, like sharing your experience with someone else. Well, I think the, like the, the whole Tamagotchi slogan is uh, digital friends of the world. Right. So like the whole point (laughs) is to be doing this and like connecting with other people. So the biggest way to stay out of a rut is to like, yeah, connect with other people that are also into Tamas and trying to find some common ground with them. I feel like that's the, the best way to like keep um, good momentum on, on a hobby like this. That's relatively niche. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And speaking of that, like, I love that you can marry like your friends in the app. Yes. I love that. So great. (laughs) It's, It's, I did it with my friend Dylan and it was just so cool. I was like, I can't believe this is actually happening. And then like, I didn't <laughs> like he may, I had the, the monkey guy from the Valentine's special. Like I got a pure monkey and I, I've been saving her for a while just in case, like, I don't know. I really like the character. So I just, I can't marry her off to anybody, but I married her to his character. And then like, like I was so excited. I was like, Oh my God. And he was like sending me, sending me pictures of the, of the baby. And I was like, Oh my God, we had a baby. <laughs> we made a baby. It was, it was like so much fun. And it was like a totally different experience. Like I haven't had that for a long time since like, I like had friends in school who had like a connection V1 or V2. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Um, She also asked, Jesse also asked um, how we go about navigating auctions and the feels of winning or losing them. Um, As far as navigating auctions go, I feel like eBay is pretty straightforward. I, I look under a bunch of different terms and I have a bunch of different terms saved so that I can see like when they are updated with new listings. But uh, I feel like navigating auctions is just a matter of you you have to be diligent and check on them frequently. You have to search under a lot of different terms, especially if you're trying to find virtual pets that aren't Tamagotchis, because sometimes they'll be listed under like a very generic sounding title, Um, like digital LCD keychain game you know (laughs) (laughs) and um uh for for that reason um navigating auctions like there's a lot of different ways you can go about doing it on the japanese auctions obviously you're gonna want to like look up as proper of a name for the product as possible in japanese characters that you're able to to search for them properly, or you can search by category on your proxy website if that's available, which I do that a lot if I'm trying to be lazy. Winning or losing them, um, I only care if I win. <laughs> <laughs> if I lose them, I'm like, whatever, you know, I'm, I don't yeah. get like, I don't get bummed out about losing an auction because for the most part, these things are going to pop up again, you know, maybe for an even better price. So I don't need to get bummed out because it's just, you know, <laughs> I'll, I'll have another opportunity. But if I win an auction, I hope I didn't overpay. 
<laughs> um, yeah. That's pretty much the long and the short of it. Because, like, if you get into an auction, sometimes you can get a little competitive with the other bidders. If you really, really want an item, I personally set, like, a budget for myself when I go into auctions. Like, I'm not going to go above a certain amount. I know this in my head and my heart. Right. (laughs) And I cannot go against what I've set for myself. Um, But some people, you know, do let, let the... The t- determination get the best of them <laughs> <laughs> that makes me think of raw tomazone's recent one of his recent comic doodle things where it was like him after he loses an auction he's like crying and eating chocolate and all this stuff and i was like <laughs> oh my god because <laughs> like i i kind of know that feeling but i also like i really i kind of avoid auctions because i don't i'm not like that competitive and i'm not good at keeping on top of them so like I'm not good at winning auctions I guess I'm, I'm good like I, I'm... I try to undercut the auction if possible like uh really? well yeah like I said earlier with the Digimon it was a it was a Digimon that was put for auction or best offer on eBay I think it was starting at $14.99 and I just sent an offer for $20 before it got any bids on it Right, yeah. And the seller accepted the offer, so I completely circumvented the auction <laughs> by just sending an offer. And, like, you can send people messages and just make them offers, and sometimes, you know, they'll take down their freaking listing and just sell to you d- directly. Uh, I don't really recommend that you go about messaging people. Like, I, I think that's a little shifty, especially on eBay in the guidelines. Sending a best offer on that, like, that is a function that they have on their website. I didn't message the person. Yeah. That being said, it's like some people, I mean, auctions I, I think... can be a little finicky because there's a lot of competition nowadays. We, we're we pretty much aware that, you know, big resellers are buying Thomas from the exact same auctions that we are. Yeah. So, you know, when you think about it that way, they've got a lot more buying power to win them. And for that reason, I don't even try to compete with them. I think my my kind of like auction superpower is finding things that kind of slip under the radar sometimes. And you can kind of get them for cheap. You just have to keep an eye out. Maybe the listing is a little bit imperfect or something and people aren't bidding on it for whatever reason but then if you get it and it ends up being fine there you go (laughs) I'm pretty sure that's what happened with my Kuropi because I think it was listed as junk but it's fine yeah exactly (laughs) no seriously like like a lot of things like are listed as junk on like zen market but I think by junk they mean it's been sitting there for a long time and it's old and untested so it's like junk but it's not like yeah the packaging on mine is like highly discolored yeah but the pet itself is not discolored and it works fine i'm it was brand new it was untested so there was like an entire possibility that it wouldn't work but i'm i do agree that i feel like when you look at the japanese auctions a lot of the ones that are listed as junk may be okay you need to inspect the pictures yourself and kind of you know do some visual analysis. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. Like, cause you can usually tell like if something is sealed in the picture, mm-hmm. I mean, it's probably, there might be some like battery corrosion with like vintages, but like in my experience with connections, like something can be in like a horrible beat up package and then like, it's totally perfect on the inside. So, and especially with the connections because they use 2032 batteries. I feel like those get corroded less often than LR44s. So the chances of it working if it's sealed are pretty high. Yeah, exactly. And like, you know, sometimes it might be hard to tell like if something is actually discolored, it might not look that way in the photo and then you take it out and it is discolored, which is a little disappointing, but if you got a good deal on it, you know, who cares? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Paint the dang thing. Put a case on it. Yep. You'll be okay. Yep. Like, I, I don't remember who I was talking to, but they were talking about getting a Tama Ouch for, like, $10 or something like that, and it's super discolored. And I was like, at that price, 
who cares, you know? Right. Because, like, the most important thing is that it works and it's not, like, so scratched up that you can't see the screen and, like, you know... I think that's the most, I mean, the most important thing for me is that it works. I mean, if I have a, like a really ugly scratched up, like the shell is scratched up, then I'll just paint it. I know not everyone will do that, but like you could try it out. It's not painting Tamagotchis is not as hard as it seems. <laughs> yeah. I do feel like some people don't think they can do it. Won't be good at it, but I mean, you don't have to take like a crazy uh, attempt at like a, extremely intricate paint job on your first try you just do something really simple and you'll be surprised with how nice things can turn out especially just doing like paint touch-ups of simple shell designs that's something that I found is like really easy to do super satisfying at the end of the day like when you have your end result looks good I actually did that today and I posted it in discord (laughs) I um got this the strawberry yogurt kitai. You know what I'm talking That's about? The a nice white shell. Yeah. Yeah, the white one with the pink like yogurt spill on it and like the spoon and the strawberries. Um, I got it for a pretty good deal off of Traders and it was missing a tag and the some of the paint was worn on it, but it was so minor. It was just it was so easy to fix up and it looks like a hundred times better. Like it looks a lot better now. <laughs> Like, I'm really, really happy. Yeah. Yeah. And just like simple, it's easy to fix stuff up. And like, I know there's extra work, but I don't like if I get something for a good price and it's something I really want, I don't mind putting the extra effort in to fix it up, you know? And like you said, it's very satisfying. And you can do a lot with just like cleaning them. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. (laughs) I feel like some people are wary to like take them apart and stuff, but you just take them apart, clean them up, you know, swab them with some alcohol a polish a screen with some like plastics you'll be good mm-hmm. to go for our last listener submission of this lovely mini sewed my friend stephanie asked um how do you how do you determine what to run next and how do you how long do you run them for i guess it really just depends on my mood i guess <laughs> i was gonna like, say the exact same thing but then i was like what a <laughs> what a passe answer but yes it just depends yeah. on my mood, you know, <laughs> like sometimes I'm feeling like running some really crazy odd pep. Other times I just want like really predictable programming. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> sometimes I want to think and sometimes I don't. <laughs> Mostly um, it has to do with my buying schedule. Like I play things as I get them and then <laughs> like I'm constantly playing a couple of things. Like I feel like right now. We're all running meets, you know. Mm-hmm. We, we haven't, like, really stopped <laughs> that. You, you aren't? No, I'm just running my Digimon right now. I, I mean, I don't blame you. I had my batteries out of this until yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> or, until this morning, actually. I lied. But, yeah. Um, a lot. I, I'm running that because it's, like, current, you know. But I'm running the, the Kuropi because I just got it. And then I'm running the Thinkway pep because I got it and then I kind of just shelved it because I guess I was running too much stuff at the time when yeah. when I received it so I didn't get to try it out and that's basically it it's just like I'm trying things I haven't played before playing some things that I know I like um obviously there's like group patches in some of the the communities so like I participate in them periodically and for that reason I I run some other things um, how do I, how long do I run them for? If it's like a vintage pet, I run them until it dies. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. they die so damn easy. It's yeah, going to happen. It's going to happen. Mm-hmm. But um, color Tamagotchis, like, I just run them until I get bored of it. And I take batteries out. Put the batteries yeah. back in whenever I'm feeling it and resume. Mm-hmm. That save feature. So Repin good. since Repin since the connection era. Thank you, Bandai. (laughs) Otherwise, we'd all lose our progress and be sad. Yeah, I think I'm like you and like I, I usually like start to run something as I buy it. So I guess if I'm buying a lot of new stuff, um, I'll be switching stuff out a lot. But sometimes I just like I'm in the mood to run something like my two favorites are the 
that I run a lot are the Uratama and the um, Kitai Akai. And I could just like, I could run those anytime. So like if I don't really know what to run and I want to run something, I'll usually run one of those. And I've noticed that like if I buy something and I don't run it like within a certain period of time, I've often like sold it again. <laughs> <laughs> like I kind of like lose my moment with that one. You know what I mean? And then like it just passes and I'm like, I'm not really interested in this anymore. I'm going to sell it. Like I literally am doing that with a Asuchi Mesuchi pair. This is like my fourth or fifth pair. And like, I have never actually tried them like really. And um, I got, yeah, (laughs) that's what I figured. I think I kept wanting to try it because like, I really wanted them when I was younger. And like, I kind of was like obsessed with them. I was like, Oh my God, it's like a connection, but like more simple and I want to try it and blah, blah, blah. It's (laughs) analog. Yeah. (laughs) Um, It makes a horrible noise (laughs) when you actually like mate them. So not recommended. Uh, Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I've seen videos and I'm like, I can. What the fuck? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I kind of get the idea. It's it's like scary and their mating sequence is so long. It is. It's I think the longest one on any Tamagotchi. It's like scary. They're like turning back and forth and one of them is like squatting and then takes the babies <laughs> out. And I'm like, I I get that. I've I can I can understand that. I don't need to run it. And so I'm trying to sell them right now. Um <laughs> Uh, and then for like how long I run something, I always want to run something for a long time and have many generations. And I feel like I don't do that ever. <laughs> like, I'm just not successful. I'm going to be quite honest that while I love, you know, having a little something to play every once in a while, I do feel a lot of validation out of, out of raising them. I also am just like super forgetful and like, sometimes they're the last thing on my mind (laughs) eventually I'm just like oh no my Tamagotchi (laughs) (laughs) and it's like I already know I know it's dead like there's no freaking way it's alive so I just go see it's a little flying egg with its wings on on the screen I'm just like okay this is sad I'm sad about it yeah and um I've you know I've ruined my lineage so Oh, on the connections, it's the worst because, like, that's kind of, like, the goal, I guess, is to kind of, like, accumulate generations. Mm -hmm. And so, like, when I have, like, I get to, like, five and I'm, like, yeah, I'm doing so good. This is amazing. And then, like, I have this thing where, like, I always forget to pause them every time, even though it's pretty easy to do it. And then, like, it dies and I'm just really sad and I put it away. (laughs) So... And then, like you said, with vintages, I definitely, like, I'll run it into adulthood. And then once it's an adult, unless I really want to get a different adult on another run, then I'm done with it for now. And some of them can really just test me. So, like, mm-hmm. if they die, I'm outie, you know, like, I, I don't even try again. For color Tamagotchis, for me, like, I get burnt out on them really quickly and then they'll die. So, like, as soon as I notice myself getting a bit bored, I'll take the batteries out because I don't want it to die and lose all my mixes or whatever. It just really depends. Like, if I get I get, I get burnt out on stuff and then I switch and right now I'm into Digimon and then I have a feeling I'm going to be running my Katai soon. And I don't know. It just, like, it really depends. <laughs> yeah, I'm just constantly kind of cycling things in and out. Mm -hmm. Just because, you know, I like variety. And I have a variety. Like, I own so many that I feel kind of like I need to be changing it up every once in a while. Yeah. Because I don't want to, like, neglect them, I guess. (laughs) Yeah, because it's like you lose interest and then you neglect them and then they die. And then it's, like, really disappointing. Like, at least for me anyway, like, when they die, I'm like, oh, this sucks. <laughs> I don't want to run this for a long time. <laughs> like, well, yeah, I mean, it's very defeating, especially if you've gained some ge- generations on it, you know. Yeah. <laughs> it makes you really, I don't know, unwilling to restart, at least for me. So every time something dies, I'm just like, I'm not going to play probably for a while now. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
Dude, did I tell you what I did with my meats? Like the, the first one. Oh my God, I'm such an idiot. Like, I don't know why, but I got it and I really wanted to try it out. But then like I got it in my mind. I needed to figure the app out. And then I was like procrastinating about the app. And so like I legit had five different eggs on that thing. I would hatch one. And I'd be like, okay, I'm going to do it. And then I wouldn't get into it. And then I let it die. I did that five times. So on my green magical meats, if you go up into my log, there's like five dead. Just five <laughs> sad crying babies. Yes, it's so bad. I feel so bad. You should. You're terrible. <laughs> I You're know. A terrible mother. I'm a terrible mother. <laughs> <laughs> I love my children. <laughs> Why oh do my I do god this? yeah and uh, i felt so bad but then but then i i figured the app out it wasn't that hard i'm just an idiot and i procrastinate about everything and... yeah I, I like didn't use the app for the longest time i'll be right? quite honest with you i feel like i first used the app like a week or two ago mm-hmm <laughs> Maybe like two weeks ago at, by now, I think. Ba- basically, it was like a little bit before the My Meats app came out because yeah. I like started messing with the regular Meats app. And then like a couple days later, I saw people posting about My Meats and I was like, well, obvious. Well, 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 <laughs> well looky here, you know, <laughs> it takes me all this. It takes me all this fucking time. <laughs> <laughs> to get into the one thing. Now I got this whole other thing I got to look into. <laughs> so then I started reading into that. I was like, oh, there's some other there's some other stuff right here. But yeah, I, I don't know why I procrastinated it for so, lo- for so long. I think it was because right when like it came out, people were having problems like, you know, the glitches and stuff. And I feel like people were thinking it was associated with the app. So maybe yeah. I like internalized that idea in in my head that connecting to the app would like fuck my Tamagotchi up. Yeah. Um, no, I feel that. But that's not been the case. <laughs> I've had no <laughs> problem with it. I go in there all the time, GPS spoof my shit and pick up all the different food items that I can. Mm-hmm. I love that. I love doing that. It's fun time. I like it a lot. Because of that, I feel like that's kept me into the meats, like, now at this point. Because I I didn't get it when it came out. I was late to the trend. Yeah. But I'm glad that I waited because I got a white one I didn't pay, like, crazy amount for. And I'm really happy with it. And, like... It didn't glitch on me, thankfully. So I'm really glad that the um, pastel hasn't really been glitching either. The one problem I've heard people having is like its connectivity to the app, and mine does the same thing. But it, I think it might be the app that's doing that and not the actual device. I'm hoping. Yeah. <laughs> Stephanie also asked, What is the max each of you has run at once? I think for me, it's probably like five. I think. Yeah, I was about to say five yeah and that's like five honest to god v pets because i feel like i have run more before but some of them have like such simplistic gameplay that i don't want to like call it a v pet or some of them don't die you know like yeah so, so it doesn't even freaking matter if i completely neglect them i changed my answer for like we're doing like only v pets and not like pedometers or something mine is like three or four I think (laughs) I can't I just feel like if I have too many that I'm not like really paying attention to each one and I'm not really like enjoying it I guess I agree yeah and it just I get too overwhelmed and like I feel like that sounds dumb because it's like a little game and it's supposed to be fun but it can be (laughs) overwhelming especially if you have them on different schedules you know like their hearts are depleting at different rates so you're having to check on them at different times oh yeah or just like having to check on something all day long exactly yeah so i already got other stuff i gotta check on all day long (laughs) like i know (laughs) having to check on this little thing in my pocket while fun sometimes is a bit of a chore you know it's a little bit of an obligation so running too many is is definitely out of the question plus it's like I go places and I need to be able to carry them and I don't like having 
so many of them in my bag. So I have yeah. a little holographic like Starbucks pouch that I carry around that carries like two colors or two or a color and like two connections. Uh huh. So that's probably like my normal setup is like I have two colored Tamagotchis with me or like a color and a connection and a vintage or something like that. And then mm-hmm. sometimes I have like larger V pets that don't fit in the pouch. So mm-hmm. at most, yeah, probably running like four or five, but normally I'm not even running that many. I'm only running three right now. Yeah. I only have two right now. And I feel like in my head, I want to run one and that's going to be my one I'm focusing on and I'm going to do everything right with it and it's going to be perfect. And then I'm like, oh, but I want to run another one. (laughs) So I'll like, I'll run something simple like a, a nano or a chibi or something. It's, it's easy to like, I don't know. It's easy to you get want swept more. away. You want you, more. <laughs> yeah. You want everything at once, but you know, it's not good for you. And then you're like, <laughs> that like honestly reminds me of some like Instagram posts that I've seen where it's like people like post what they're running, but they are literally have like, I don't even know, like 10 V pets on at once. And I'm just like, how are you running all of those? Oh my God. I think, I think it was today. Do you follow, um, Doobie Chi 66, I think is their name mm-hmm. on Instagram. Okay. Well, I've, I followed them on Instagram for a while now and they run a lot of pets, I think like 15 at a time or something. And I'm just like, oh my God. And like every time I look at the picture and I just recently commented on their, one of their photos and I said, every time I look at your your pictures I I want to run more but then I'm like oh no (laughs) I can't do it (laughs) I can't do it I'll I'll hit critical mass and then after that I'm just neglecting all of them and I already have the problem of neglecting them when I'm not even running that many you gotta keep (laughs) things realistic basically yeah well to close things out we are going to do a little craft corner plug um up on Facebook is where I saw these on yep. Tamagotchi collectors. Daisy Prowler posted the most precious um, Tamagotchi earrings that they all are like sets of three and they are, are different set like steps of the evolution. So some of them have like the baby character, the adult character and a death screen, I think. <laughs> and other ones have uh, a a elder character um her instagram is at pastryplug.shop her website is pastryplug.com i think these are incredible what about you dude oh my god they're amazing like i don't i mean i assume they're made of resin but like they look they're just perfect. And like we'll be posting um, some visuals for this episode on our Instagram. If you wanted to see um, her um, work, we're going to post one image of the earrings. And we'll be tagging her Instagram there as well. But yeah, you can go to her website and just, you know, look at all the different ones. And they're just so, so tiny and perfect. And I don't know how she printed the image on there. I'm just like so in awe of them. And like I saw them and I was like, oh, my God, can we mention this on our podcast? And she was like, yeah, of course. So I'm like, really, I'm just they're perfect. Like that's yeah. the one way to describe them is perfect. And I can tell like, man, she just put so much work into these. The level of detail is incredible because they are so, so small. The ones we're looking at are transparent green with a shimmer. And um, like, as we said, they have the little uh, uh, pixel screens on them, like different steps of evolution. And I don't know how she did it either. I'm guessing... I mean, it looks like probably some sort of like printed image set in the resin, but I don't know exactly how she does that without it bleeding. It's really, really good. Looks amazing. Yeah, really superb. Amazing. Thank you so much for letting us show this to everybody because I'm really excited for everybody else to see it too. Yeah, and she seemed very passionate about it. When I saw her original post on Facebook, I could tell that she had been kind of gearing up to share this with people for a while. So really excited to share it with you guys today. So I think... 
that's all we have for you guys today. Yeah, that's um, going to be it for this not so mini episode. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm not I'm not mad. I don't think anybody's going to be mad that this mini episode oh, is not mini at all. <laughs> definitely not. If anything, I feel like I saw a couple of people be like, "No, just, you know, do it as long as possible, you know." I want yeah. a 4 hour Tama rant. I'm like, "Okay." You yeah, know. I think that was I think that was dandy on Discord. I see well, you. <laughs> we'll give the people what they want. Yeah. <laughs> this is for you. We did it for you. Well, yeah. we hope you guys enjoyed this one and uh stay tuned because episode three, the uh vintage versus color pixel debate is going to be up soon, before you know it. It's gonna be a hefty one. Really hefty and juicy and all kinds of stuff. <laughs> There's all sorts of news. All sorts of tea, yep. all sorts of everything to be said. So we can't wait for you guys to, to join us on the next one. Yep. Until then, we'll see you guys. Bye. Bye. <laughs>